Hi, my name is Jeremy and this little YouTube channel has just reached over a million views and I just wanted to say thank you for watching our videos and while some people may say it's not a big deal because YouTube is so big now and a million views is probably not a lot, well, it's a big deal to me and thank you for your support and as a token of my appreciation, I thought I'll be sharing a bit of backstory to my YouTube journey, what I've done wrong on YouTube, what I've learned, how's it going so far and was it worth it? So, without further ado, let's do this! Alright! Wow! Yep! Uh, this is what we're taking to Vietnam! So, we have to fly to Cambodia today. It's a Friday night in Siem Reap and we're gonna try some spiders. We're in Hoi An today and we're gonna be boosted boarding in our new suits. This year, we're going camper vanning in Japan! Alex made it to the top of Mount Fuji. Well, we've talked for rescue. And rescue is coming. Not sure when. There's lots of news of the coronavirus. We'll come to Melbourne, the most locked down city in the world. Oh my god! We've just reached a million views! Wow! Before I started making videos on YouTube, I was a replenishment manager at a popular convenience store called 7-Eleven. And as a replenishment manager at head office, together with the team, I looked after the deliveries of stock into over 600 stores in Australia. Although I was just middle management, this was a very demanding job as you're constantly solving problems. Problems like delivery complaints, food safety concern, purchasing issues, and sometimes we had to deal with natural disasters and even terrorist attacks. But the one that gives me nightmares the most has got to be IT outages. And while these activities soaked up a lot of my attention, my secondary function as a replenishment manager was to report and summarize supply chain issues for senior executives to keep them informed or to help them solve a particular strategic supply chain problem. And I guess this is where I found solace in this hectic workload. And this part of my job, I think, is really very similar to a journalist or a YouTuber publishing their product reviews and travel report. Let me explain. In that role, whenever the company wants to carry out a new change to the supply chain system, I would often collect information by speaking with stakeholders and various experts from various departments in the company. Because in supply chain management, the littlest of change can affect the entire business. And then I would compile all my findings along with my recommendation into a document to be shared with senior management to help them make an informed decision. And this is exactly what popular channels like Linus Tech Tips and Marcus Brownlee do for a living. Whenever a brand new tech comes out, they would talk to the experts, perform some kind of tests on them, and then they would compile their findings and recommendation into a video, and then they would share it with you, the general public, so you can make informed decisions. Now, of course, in the corporate environment, that means the information were always written up into long, boring documents. But sometimes I get to present these in PowerPoints because it's always a lot easier to show people the problem than to get them to read the executive summary. And yes, senior execs are just like regular people. They all have cognitive resistance. And the less barriers you put between you and them getting the point of your message, the better. Here is where I found myself to be very effective, so much so that sometimes a senior executive would just copy my presentation as their own. And I love it when they do that. I love telling stories with data and information, and I love toiling for hours just to make sure that the data on the graphs are accurate and that the graphics and the font that they are presented on look immaculate. Because when you're only given a few minutes to convey a point, you want your information to be easily consumed and digested. And I think this dedication to detail carries true to the production of my YouTube videos today. However, my transition from the corporate world to the YouTube world hasn't been quite as smooth. First of all, it has taken me four years to hit one million views. And that's because on YouTube, it's not just dealing with graphs, data, and PowerPoint. To do YouTube and to produce the kind of videos that I make, I have had to learn to become a cameraman, a sound recordist, and a music supervisor. And the first few videos that I made, which can still be found on this channel, 
had such horrible lighting, bad audio, and poor music choice. I'm much better with lighting now, and I check my audio constantly. In our camper van in Japan series, we spent days talking into our main camera without knowing that it wasn't recording any sound. It was painful to only find that out when we got home, because unlike Hollywood, there are no reshoots here. <laughs> As for music selection, I think that has improved a bit, and that's partly thanks to Epidemic Sound. Their library of music have improved a lot, and it's much easier to find usable soundtrack than what it was a couple of years ago. If you're a content creator, it's worth checking out their one month free trial. I'll leave a link in the description below if you're interested. Now, there is one bad habit that I retain from the corporate world, which is whenever I write, I would often prioritize completeness and accuracy over completion. You see, when you have dealt with many difficult subcontractors that don't listen to you, you tend to become very precise with your language when giving instructions, because otherwise they might accidentally cause another IT outage. Which is why during the start, my videos are jam-packed with way too much information and they are so boring. I don't think I have completely gotten rid of this bad habit, but let me know what you think in the comment section below. Apart from writing differently for YouTube, I have had to learn to present with enthusiasm. Unlike in the corporate world where the audience is forced to give you their time, on YouTube, you have to generate energy, otherwise you won't attract any audience. And if you flick through my older videos, which I hope you don't, you'll notice how bad and lethargic I was in my delivery. And if I could send a message to my younger self, I would remind him that, hey, facial expressions and tone of voice conveys more to the audience than a well-written script ever can. And it's a miracle that this video got to 13,000 views. Can you believe it? Neither can I. Now, during the start of making videos, I was very uncomfortable in front of the camera. It felt unnatural and I thought it was because I was an introvert. But after reading this book called Your Personality Is Not Permanent by Benjamin Hardy, I've learned that we all have different personalities for dealing with different people at various situations. For example, a grandfather may act differently in front of his grandchildren than when he's in front of his own children. And again, he's different when he's out with his friends. And I've learned from this book that our personalities are actually very malleable. They can be changed, and anyone can learn to become any personality they need to be, including learning how to become comfortable when talking into a camera. It's a pretty good book. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to check it out. Now, so far in my YouTube journey with a million views, I've only gotten 4,800 subscribers, which isn't groundbreaking. In 2017, YouTube changed their partnership program to only allow creators with over 4,000 watch hours and 1,000 subscribers to be able to monetize their content on their platform. So I wasn't able to monetize my content until I reached that requirement, which was at the end of 2019 when we made this video, which has clocked over 430,000 views. And I still think this isn't a very good video. But I do thank those that have subscribed with us since then, and there are a lot of you, and I appreciate your support, and hopefully we can keep bringing you better content. And for those that are new to this channel, please do consider subscribing. We do make some very awesome tech and travel videos here. <music> My YouTube journey hasn't been what I would describe as successful, but telling stories, editing videos, and sharing knowledge are still what I am most passionate about, and I don't see that changing anytime soon. Plus, I have definitely learned a lot from making bad videos. So how much do I make on these videos? The correct answer is, it depends on which videos. We've made the most with the videos that got us our breakup moment, which is the one I've mentioned earlier. The algorithm just went crazy and it served it to a bunch of people. We've been trying to replicate that video ever since, which is why we made a bunch of these. And we haven't been able to repeat that breakup moment since. However, those efforts weren't wasted because we did get a bunch of subscribers through making those tech videos. And that again is thanks to you guys sticking with us and leaving us great comments and feedback. Now, another interesting video that we made, which talks about dropshipping, has very little views, but it attracts a lot of ad revenues. 
So is it worth it overall? In terms of monetary value, probably not at the moment. And I'm sorry if I don't share the actual sums with you, but making less than $5,000 a year is probably not going to replace you having an actual job. But if creating content is something you're passionate about, so much so that you'll get absorbed in this kind of work and lose track of time, and you love toiling with graphics and media, then I say yes, stick to your guns, keep going because no one is going to motivate you harder than yourself. Now granted, there are much faster ways to grab attention on YouTube, like doing a video on a controversial topic. And if you're okay and brave enough to be branded and identified with that controversial topic, then by all means, that's the fastest way to get viewer engagement and subscribers. Go ahead, disrupt. But for me, I probably haven't found the right kind of controversial topic that aligns with my inner value. And that's probably my way of saying that I haven't found my niche yet. And perhaps when I do find that niche, you might even get to see this video appearing on your browse page. And I hope when it does, you'll give it a thumbs up. And so that's my journey so far. And I hope you've learned a thing or two from a tiny YouTube creator. I'm very excited to have reached a million views on this channel. And if this is your first time on this channel, please do consider subscribing as we will be bringing you more exciting content in the near future. And if you have any suggestions for future videos or any questions at all, post them down below. Thank you for watching. Thanks for your massive support. Bye.